So here she is, Trish Murphy, U.S. Air Force. Welcome. Thank you so much, Gene. I appreciate the opportunity to hop on. We are great to have you here on Make Your Move. Uh, I'm going to open the interview with the same question I ask every guest, is, and that's for you to uh, please summarize your active duty time in, in your own words. What did you do on active duty and where did you serve? Um, so in short, I was a mechanic and um, we worked on all the support equipment for the aircraft. So if you're an Air, an Air Force veteran, you understand that as age, right? So where the airplanes went, we went and um, I was stationed in Alaska. So I tell everybody that means we did the exact same thing that everybody else did, but we did it on ice nine months out of the year um, without the really cool um, costumes that the Disney escapades, ice capades has. <laughs> so you're talking like wrench wrench turning mechanic yes absolutely yes I was, we, I was not expecting that yeah all of it uh it's funny it's funny I actually scored really high in mechanics on the ASVAB so I was like what the heck let's have an adventure and I did I got an adventure but um, I learned a lot of really cool stuff um, about mechanics and how that works. Um, it's incredible the level of confidence that it gives you when you know that you understand what's wrong with it or you have a pretty good idea what's wrong with it and then like you can fix it and it's it feels really good. So what, what were you working on? We worked on anywhere from generators to heaters to um, hydraulic test stands. Uh, so every single mechanical system we worked on, we even worked on air conditioners. So electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, gas engines, diesel engines. So do you call on handymen to come to your home or are they, are they too scared to come because they might, they might get challenged? So that's carpentry, but I typically can drop my car off and say, this is what it's doing. And I'm pretty sure this is it. So <laughs> Well, you know, I, I say handy bend, you know, <clears throat> it was a general term. Right. You, right. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. sure you, uh, you, you keep them honest. Yeah, it's, it's great. I like to go and just, um, you know, have a conversation with my mechanic, you know, it's just a, a small shop. He's a veteran too. So, you know, when I do go, we hang out for 20, 30 minutes and talk shop a little bit. So it's kind of fun. So how long did you serve? I was in for four years um, and got out because my daughter was born, started having kids and a family. And I just felt like um, she needed to have a mom and I'm glad I did. So I, I summarize all of my service with, I'm so glad I served, but I'm also really glad I got out because um, I wanted, I wanted my kids to have some stability and that was important to me. Did you get out from Alaska? Was that your yes? Uh, did, and so, <clears throat> what was that uh, transition experience like? What what sort of help was available? Did you see job opportunities? Did you have to relocate before you started looking for work? How did how did that come about? So, the, interestingly enough, um, the transition, at least at the time, you know, twenty something. This was like late not late. This is nineteen ninety nine. So it's been a minute. Um, the transition program there really was focused um, pretty primarily with the local area, but I knew that we wouldn't be staying there because by the, I knew that like one year after I got out, my husband at the time was retiring and getting out as well. So, and we knew we weren't going to stay there. So my, my time there was limited. I knew it was going to be limited. So there was no point. And then um, I wanted to stay home with the kids. I felt like they needed their mom. Um, I like my kids, so I wanted to spend time with them. Um, <laughs> fortunately, that's still true most days. And um, so I, I got to be a mom and um, be with them and raise them. I even homeschooled them. Um, that's actually much harder than you might think. So really, out of everything I've ever done in my life, raising the kids and homeschooling them was by far the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, thankfully, at the time, I didn't realize what I was biting off. but. Um, so this would have been maybe early 2000s? Yeah. So my daughter, my first time was born in 90. Yeah, in 99. And then I had my son in, in late 2000 and then, or yeah, in 2000 and then um, four year break and we had two more. So I was home raising the kids. My husband was working, you know, God awful amount of hours um, with his transition. 
uh, in his new job, um, which took us to New Hampshire. Um, so I, I kept the home base. I kept I kept the fort down while he he did that, um, which was was really good. It worked out. Um, kids had stability, and I found ways to plug into the community and you know friends and and things like that. So. Um, and then when it was time for them to, to go to school, I, I decided to homeschool. Thinking back to that time frame, homeschooling wasn't as widely known as it is today. Was it, did you feel like you were a, a pioneer? Were you, were you one of a uh, few or was there a community of homeschoolers that you were able to plug into? I was plugged into just a handful. So the whole thing started when, you know, my daughter was turning five and, and needed to go to school. And, you know, I I'd, I'd looked at the schedule and if I, I, we were in New Hampshire at the time and they have very good schools. However, if, if I sent her to, to public school, she would only see her dad, you know, a couple of evenings a week. And I didn't feel like that was in her best interest. So um, she got to see him quite a bit. And so I felt like for her development, it was best not to play with that. So in my mind, I was like, it's just kindergarten. How hard can it be? And then 13 years later, you know, I graduated her out of homeschool. So I think a and lot of the, things start with how hard can it be? Ch- Were people checking on you uh, as, as you went along to see how this was going? Or I, I'm not directly familiar with how homeschooling is, uh, is uh, how the quality control works, but were there, was there testing along the way or how does that work? Oh, absolutely. Um, so by the time they were to an age where they needed to be tested, we were in Florida um, and they have a couple of options in the state of Florida. You can have um, a standardized test or you can hire a certified teacher to come in and do a portfolio review. And there is a whole checklist of what that teacher is looking for. Um, they interview the child. You know, we had kept lists of books that the kids have read and, you know, if we did a field trip, the kids would have to write up whatever they did. We'd take pictures and they'd do a little book and teacher would come in and ask the child, you know, all about what their school was and school work, school year was about. And the kids loved it because they had an opportunity to really show off what they did and, and what they were able to accomplish and, you know, what their favorite thing was and what they learned. And then, um, you know, I kept most of their work in a binder. And so she looked through all of that stuff. So it was, and we had to keep those, you know, those binders for, you know, three years in case there was a question from the, the school board as to whether or not we were actually schooling the kids. So, um, but yeah, so there was, there was checks and balances um, and, you know, required a lot of discipline um, and flexibility all at the same time. Right. So I can write a curriculum or a scope of sequence. And if I have a child that suddenly displays an interest in something completely different. I don't want to squash that interest just to stick to our plan. So I'll move stuff around or spend more time on one thing and less time on another one. So it enabled us to really have um, a tailored educational experience for them and really taught them how to be lifelong learners um, because I let them explore the things that interested them at the times. You use the phrase, how hard can it be? Is that a, is that a mindset that you, you carry forward? It is, it t- tends to give me into a lot of trouble. Um, when I say trouble, it gets me, it gets me into doing hard things, but I learned that, um, you know, with, with grit and, and, you know, kind of sheer muscle, sometimes there's really not much you can't overcome. And that's one of the things from my service um, that I take with me. I didn't realize I took that with me, but I take it with me. And it, I really do have the mindset, like how hard can it actually be? And there's not a lot that I let defeat me. So. Um, you came back into the, uh, the workforce at some point. Can you tell us how that came about? So, Thanks to the Montgomery GI Bill, I went to college while I was homeschooling my kids and got my degree in marketing and um, really fell in love with that. So by the time I graduated, um, 
I really wanted to put what I had learned in college to, to practice. And I had a couple of friends who had businesses and I went to them and said, hey, do you want some free marketing? I'd really love to apply what I've learned to, to your business and, and learn like, how does it, how does marketing really work when you apply it? Like on the job really work. And so I did that for a handful of years and had a lot of fun. Um, just, you know, trial and error with, with some friends and had some success with things and, and learned a lot anywhere from social media to working with major magazine companies across the, the, you know, the country, um, getting ads in designed and approved and, and things like that. So, um, I cut my teeth on, on quite a bit. And then I realized, Hey, I really would love to do this. Um, as a business. And then by that time, the kids were getting a little older and I was getting tired of being a full-time mom um, and homeschooler. Mostly the teacher side was difficult because, um, you know, I was always either teacher or mom, you know, and I was always the drill sergeant at some point, you know, and it was tough to just enjoy them. And I, I didn't like that anymore. So um, we transitioned about four or five years ago and um, my older two kids graduated the homeschool and my younger two kids, we um, transitioned them into a private school, um, which is actually, they're a hybrid. So the kids only went to school a couple of days a week, which was perfect for this transition. So at that time I was building the business and, you know, really starting a career. Um, so it's, when you put it in perspective, um, well, I'm 47, my last employer was the United States Air Force. So I've never had a real job, you know, in my uh, adulthood, you know, since, I mean, I had grocery store jobs or whatever when I was in high school, but, um, I, I don't even know if I'd make a good employee, to be honest with you. So it's really good that I have a business. <laughs> I think in a lot of ways you would, because there's no doubt you were you were getting a lot done and you were uh, keeping things uh, on track and, and uh, keeping the kids uh, progressing on, on, on. Yes. But tell growth of the business and uh, your, your path as an entrepreneur and, and uh, owner of, uh, of your own operation here. So, the, you know, that's a, that's always a very interesting journey, I think, for every business owner. Um, many of us go into it because we're really good at our trade or we love our trade. So we say, hey, let's start a business. Let's do that for other people. Um, and then we tend to quickly discover that running a business is its own is its own set of its own skill set, right? So um, you've got to learn those pieces at the time that you need to learn them as you're also growing the business, fulfilling the work, perhaps um, hiring people, um, especially if you are building a business out of from scratch, right? It's you're not buying a business or uh, um, purchasing a franchise. Those are a little bit different scenarios. Um, still challenging um, and have their own challenges, but um, it was a lot of figuring out what do business, what do my clients really need, right? Um, and my personal philosophy is you're always learning what your client really needs. So um, it's it's learning where they need, what problems are you really solving for them, and then and how can you deliver that and be profitable, maintain a quality. Um, and you know provide that that good service so it's always checking those areas um and improving it's always in my opinion business is it's always a work in progress um every every part of the business is a work in progress we're going to uh put the company name in the in the show notes and people will will know how to get a hold of you uh but Perfect. go ahead and tell us the name of the company and how long you've been in business um, my company is Marketing Smarty Pants, and we've been in business since 2016. That's part-time the first few years, but really been double down all full-time and actually building an agency since 2019. Uh, how scary was the pandemic for you? Petrified. Absolutely. As far as in my adulthood and finances and stability, it was the scariest time I've ever experienced. So and I was on one that, of the lucky ones. Uh, 
I was one of the lucky ones because I, I have friends who are also in marketing and they lost all of their clients. Um, what, did, what did you learn looking back on that? <sighs> Couple things. And this part sounds cliche is, you know, expect the unexpected, right? Secondly is when, when things get really bad, it's the relationships that get you through it. So I had clients that called me and they're like, listen, I, I can't pay you for marketing. And I said, don't worry about it. Um, I said, I'm not going to hurt your business more by not doing your marketing. I said, tell you what, you pay me what you can, when you can, I don't care. Um, and I said, I'm stuck in the house all day. What are we going to do? Right. So, um, that's what we did. And I had clients that couldn't pay for months and then started paying again. And then I got, I was lucky because there were other clients that I had in certain industries and they were ramping up their marketing. So there was more we did. It, it seemed to work itself out, but it was really scary because we just didn't know how long this was gonna, was gonna go on. And it, it was really tough, really tough. Congrats on the perseverance. Trish, how, how do you maintain balance? Is that something that you even think about? Is it something you pursue? Balance. I think balance means something different to everybody. Um, so I'm very good at paying attention to, um, so I'm very self-aware. So I, I know when I need a break and I know when, I know when I need to get plugged in with people. I know when I need a break from all of it. I know when I need to go, um, you know, ride my horses and, you know, get my soul recharged and things like that. So I pay attention to that. So um, even though I might be, sometimes I'll work on a Sunday, that's not necessarily a failure. If I'm working on a Sunday, it's not because I have to work on a Sunday. It's because those are the things I want to get done to feel like I'm on top of things. And so it's really is for myself. So if you catch me working on a weekend, I'm doing it for me and not other people or feeling like I had to do it. I wanted to get that done. Or it was a project that um, I've been like chomping at the bit to tackle. Um, generally, it's something creative. Uh, so it's it's a hit or miss for me. I, I pay attention to how I'm doing. I think in entrepreneurship, that's that's part of the advantage is that you have the choice to let weekend days look like work days and vice versa. And, and so right. you mentioned horses. You do you get to ride through the week or is that a is that a choice as well? I used to schedule days on my I used to put days on my schedule. Um and now I'm looking for a horse to lease. So things are a little bit um dry as far as the horse riding right now. But once I find um, a horse to lease. I'll actually schedule. I have schedules. So, and sometimes I would go on Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday morning and, you know, I was on my schedule and it was blocked and people would want to see me. I'm sorry, I'm busy Tuesday morning. They don't need to know that I'm at the barn, right? <laughs> That's not their business, <laughs> right, but right. It, it makes me a better person if I get to do those things. So, and it enables me to do these other hard things. Last question. Uh, biggest lesson learned since active duty. Ooh, biggest lesson learned. Mm. As a veteran, I think as a veteran, we really are more different than we think we are. And it takes a while. Um, it takes some time being back in the civilian culture to realize and recognize how different we really are. That is a very thoughtful answer. Trish Murphy, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks. I appreciate it.